Hello, saya Satpal dan saya ada soalan untuk kamu. Apakah identiti saya? Adakah saya seorang berbangsa India, seorang wartawan, penggemar filem, ataupun fanboy produk Apple? Jawapan sejujurnya adalah semua di atas. Identiti seseorang itu kompleks dan berlapis. Sebagai contoh, identiti bangsa India saya berlapis juga dengan asal-usul nenek moyang saya dari Punjab. Tapi pada masa yang sama, saya juga seorang anak Malaysia yang gemar menjamu teh tarik. Identiti yang berlapis ini yang membentuk kita dan memainkan peranan penting dalam cara kita berinteraksi dengan orang lain. Tapi sekiranya mana-mana ciri identiti ini terancam, maka tercetuslah isu-isu seperti ini. Ini digelar oleh pakar psikologi sebagai teori identiti sosial di mana seseorang menentukan siapa diri mereka berdasarkan kumpulan-kumpulan di mana mereka merasa diterima. Tapi, bagaimanakah teori ini berfungsi? Dan adakah konflik selalu akan tercetus antara kumpulan-kumpulan yang berbeza? Pada awal tahun 70-an, pakar psikologi sosial Henry Tatchfeld telah menjalankan suatu eksperimen bersama sekumpulan orang yang dipilih secara rambang. Mereka dibahagi kepada kumpulan berdasarkan ciri-ciri yang tidak penting. Contohnya, warna baju atau pelukis kegemaran mereka. Tapi, bila peserta eksperimen ini diminta untuk mengagihkan wang di antara mereka semua, kebanyakan mereka hanya memberi wang kepada peserta yang di dalam kumpulan dia sendiri. Beberapa ahli keluarga Tatchfell telah dibunuh semasa penjajahan Nazi di Polandia. Eksperimen ini adalah cara untuk dia memahami bagaimana perbezaan identiti di antara manusia boleh membawa kepada pembunuhan berdamai-ramai. Dari sinilah tercetusnya teori identiti sosial. Identity is actually very important. You know, it help us to identify ourselves, have a clearer picture of who we are and our confidence. It actually is a double-edged sword, I would say. It actually helps to connect and unite people, especially when we have shared identity. But on the other hand, identity can also separate you know, and divide people, especially when we have like politic identity, you know, we have very uh, narrow racist identity. Persoalannya, Bagaimanakah fenomena biasa ini boleh juga mengakibatkan ini? Well, the different identity will come out in different contexts. Like for instance, when I'm at work now, my role is a lecturer. But once I leave this office, when I return home, then my identity, the stronger identity that prevail would be identity of a mother. Or of a wife. The other thing is um, when our situation or our identity is being challenged. For example, we talk about, oh, you, you, you love football, oh, I love football as well. So we, that is something that connects us. But you know, when you start to talk about, you know, your favourite group that is Liverpool and my favourite group is Manchester United, and that's where you challenged that no, Manchester is terrible, you know, it's bad, you know, Liverpool is, is better. So when my belief and my values is being challenged, and that's where, again, my identity of being a, Ma- a Manchester United fan will be well forth. Sebuah eksperimen pada 2016 telah mengkaji reaksi otak manusia apabila diberikan maklumat yang bercanggah dengan pendapat politik mereka. Didapati, bahagian amigdala mereka diaktifkan. Dan bahagian itulah yang memainkan peranan penting apabila seseorang berada dalam situasi kecemasan atau berbahaya. Ini menunjukkan mana-mana ancaman terhadap identiti kita boleh merasa seperti ancaman yang serius dan nyata. It is a imaginary threat. For example, they might feel that they are threatened by the influx of immigrant workers. But when we go through the numbers, it might not be the case. But more often than not, you have to acknowledge that fear is something that is a very powerful political tool. And this is when politics come into into the picture. Political groups would use this uh, similar characteristics as by the group to mobilize the groups to give support to people who have similar characteristics to to allow them to be in power. Dari situlah lahirnya konsep politik identity, di mana parti dan pakatan politik dibentuk berdasarkan identiti bangsa, agama, latar belakang sosial dan sebagainya. Pencerobohan Rusia ke atas Ukraine baru-baru ini adalah satu contoh politik identiti. 
Vladimir Putin melancarkan peperangan itu di atas dakwaan bahawa rakyat Ukraine sepatutnya digolongkan dengan bangsa Rusia. When we look at identity politics, it's not necessarily all negative. Um, in the sense that there are marginalized groups, especially colored people, for example, in the US, that basically are able to mobilize their themselves by using identity politics, right? In order to get their voices heard. But in some other cases also, identity politics could also be used uh, negatively. For example, the, the rise of the right wings in US and, and in Europe as well is seen as one way of how identity politics is being used to enhance the superiority feelings of one group over the others. Usually the groups feel threatened, especially the majority groups would feel threatened by the rise of the minority groups in their society. Mari kita imbas kembali. Identity kita adalah penting untuk kita mencari hala tuju hidup. Tapi apabila identity kita diancam, kita menjadi defensif dan ingin melindungi kumpulan sendiri. Ini boleh dieksploitasi untuk kepentingan politik. Jadi bagaimanakah kita boleh membina satu masyarakat yang boleh hidup bersama secara aman walaupun identiti kita berbeza? Sebagai permulaan, kita boleh meluaskan definisi kami mengenai kumpulan sendiri. We need to be able to realize that every human being have multiple identity. We are different, but there are also other identities that we share. That is what we call the common identity. And that is why education is so important. To transform all these stereotypes, this dogmatic worldview, this narrowly defined identity. Because by having education, quality education, no matter how poor you are, you get yourself exposed and you get to see things differently. When they don't have opportunity for education, their worldview, whatever they consume, is very confined to whatever they hear from their community from their parents. So if they live in a community filled with stereotypes, then their sense of identity will become more narrow, will become more dogmatic, will become more rigid. Satu lagi yang kita boleh buat adalah jangan fikir politik itu adalah zero sum game. Maksudnya, jika sesuatu kumpulan itu mendapat hak yang lebih, tidak bermaksud hak itu diambil dari kumpulan lain. Dunia ini cukup besar bagi semua untuk hidup secara sama rata. Dan lebih lagi, dunia ini sebenarnya lebih indah kerana identiti-identiti kita yang pelbagai. I gave the example of um, nasi lemak, the Malay maci who sell it by the roadside. Where did she get the chicken? Where did she get the rice from? It goes all the way back to who actually planted those paddy. So the whole chain, you know, from 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 getting from from planting the paddy to harvesting to the to what you're having on the plate, it involves so many different people. So when we look at that plate of nasi lemak. And if we are able to see how lives are interconnected and this common identity will actually unite us. Jadi, sebelum kita benci seseorang sebab dia pakai jenama smartphone yang lain atau menyokong kelab bola pihak lawan, ingatlah yang anda sebenarnya mempunyai banyak lagi identiti yang dikongsi seperti ibu, bapa, adik-beradik, pelayan Malaysia dan identiti dikongsi yang paling penting sekali, manusia. Manusia.